It's 38 after the hour. The first law of modern feminism is that men hold all, or at least the majority, of the power. But at least one man begs to differ. His name is Warren Farrell, and he's a psychologist who was elected three times to the board of the National Organization for Women in New York City. But in his new book, The Myth of Male Power, he takes to task many of the most cherished assumptions of groups like now, and he joins us this morning. It's a fascinating read. Thank you. That I will give you. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> to go over some of the details in this book, I, you know, obviously women talk about the glass ceiling. You mm -hmm. have made a big case for what you call the glass cellar. Yes, I'm saying that a lot of men feel, like for example, if a successful man meets a successful woman, oftentimes, and they have children, they're about, about ready to have children, the successful man, woman often says to herself, well, you know, I have three options here. Option one is I could be full-time involved with my children. Option two is I can be full-time involved with the workplace. Option three is I can do some combination of both. The man says, well, you know, I have three options too. Option one is I can work full-time. Option two is I can um, work full-time. And option three is I can um, work overtime. And so he, he often feels that when, when he commits and he has this opportunity for intimacy, that he's often encouraged to not be with the family and with love, but he's encouraged to turn his back on love and to be a wallet for the family. And so all you have to do is, is to go into a, car, a cab in New York City and ask a cab driver, what did you want to do when you were young? And he'll give you a fantasy of what he wanted to do when he was young. And, and ask him, what is he doing now? And he's driving a cab 60, 70 hours a week. But the reality week. is that women are really in low-paying jobs. Women who get divorced many times end up living below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. Women are left supporting children, and men many times don't do it. So people's myths or fantasies about what they want to become when they grow up fall on both sides of the sexual line. That's precisely what I'm saying that both sexes have disappointed fantasies. And what we've done for the last 25 years, and what I did when I was on the board of NOW in New York City, is I only, fo I only focused on women's experience of powerlessness. I did not understand men's experience of powerlessness. But how can you talk about women's a sense of powerlessness and equate it with men when there are only four women in the Senate. When, if you look at the number of CEOs in this country who make more than five hundred thousand dollars a year, you will rarely find a woman. All, there all, aren't many women heading Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. All of men's lives, we've learned to gather, to, to feel the obligation to earn the money in order to feel worthy of love. And so, yes, men earn more money, but when a person feels obligated to earn money, that's not options, and options is power, obligation is not power. So you can measure the powerlessness of a group of people by their feel the, the feelings that they have to feel obligated to earn more money. So for example, if I ask a woman out when I was a kid, I learned that I couldn't feel comfortable asking her out unless I had more money than she did in order to pay for her dinner, in order to pay for her tickets. So I began taking jobs that earned me more money that pay that, that I liked less. I took jobs like lawn mowing rather than babysitting. Let and me move on to health care for a second. Okay. You make a case that prostate cancer kills as many men than, as breast cancer kills women, and yet funding for breast cancer far outstrips 600, funding. 660% more funding for breast cancer. But those stats really cancer. don't stand up. I mean, there aren't more men dying of prostate no, cancer, no. and they're very different diseases. They're, well, of course they're different diseases, but there are 14% fewer men dying of prostate cancer than there are women dying of breast cancer. And there is 660% more funding for breast cancer than there is for prostate cancer. Now, what I'm saying is this. I'm saying is that I support strongly research for breast cancer and for women's health. But I also support strongly men learning that they are also dying of 17 areas of health that are extremely underfunded also. To learn about testicular cancer, to learn about pr prostate cancer, and I'm, I'm challenging us as the government uh, for, to put our taxpayer money also into helping men live. Because when men die, women are also hurt. When either sex loses, when either sex wins, both sexes lose. Well, the book is called The Myth of Male Power is a controversial read. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think thank you. <laughs>